I, Pallavi Srivastava, on behalf of Jaipuria Institute of Management, Lucknow, heartily welcome you all to the FTP on the Art of Literature Review and Theory Building. Our distinguished speaker for the session, Dr. Justin Paul, needs no introduction. Still, let me read out some excerpts from his illustrious profile. Dr. Justin Paul serves as Editor-in-Chief of uh, International Journal of Consumer Studies, an ABDCA category journal, a former faculty member with the University of Washington. He is a full professor of PhD and MBA programs, University of Puerto Rico, USA. He holds three honorary titles of Distinguished Professor with Indian Institute of Management, Kojikod, SIBM, Pune, and MS University in Tamil Nadu. He is known as an author, co-author of best-selling books on business environment, international marketing, services marketing, export-import management, and management of banking and financial services. Dr. Paul has served as lead guest editor with the International Business Review, Journal of Business Research, Journal of Retailing and Consumer Services, Journal of uh, Asia, um, Asia Pacific Business Review and European Business Review. He serves as associate editor with the European Management Journal and Journal of Strategic Marketing. He has also edited special issues for Small Business Economics and Journal of Pro uh, Promotion Management. He was a senior associate editor for International Journal of Emerging Markets, the Service Industries Journal, and European Journal of International Management for three years. Dr. Paul introduced Mass Teach Model and Measure for Brand Management, CPP Model for Internationalization, Scope Framework, uh, framework for Small Firms, and 7P Framework for International Marketing. His articles have been downloaded over 7 lakh times during la uh, 70, uh, yeah, 7 lakh times during last six years. He has published over 75 research papers in SSCI journals and 100 plus in Scopus. Over 40 papers are in A or A star journals. He has also served as faculty member of Nagoya University, Japan, and IIM. In addition, he has taught full courses at RS University, Denmark, Renewable Eco Leite Management, and University of Versailles, France, University of Lithuania, Warsaw, Poland, and has conducted research development pro workshops in countries such as Austria, USA, Spain, Croatia, China so on. He has been an invited speaker at several institutions such as University of Chicago, Vienna University of Commerce and Business, Austria, Kudan in UIBE, China, Barcelona and Madrid, and has published three best-selling case, st uh, case studies with Ivy and Harvard. He has visited over 60 countries for academic work. Other than this, recently he has been awarded as a New Age Icon Change Makers Award 2020. Dr. Paul, please accept our hearty congratulations for the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm also happy to inform that we have received participation from far and wide within and outside India, and I'm sure it is going to be a great learning experience for all. Now, I would like to invite Professor Ankit Merotra, Dean Research, to formally welcome our guest and the participants and say a few words. Thank you, Professor Pallavi. Uh, it's a really very interesting uh, profile that we have, uh, Professor Paul. And I would say that the theme of this session is also as interesting as the speaker itself, because he specializes in uh, the art of literature review and the theory building. So you, all of us are going to have a great time. Just to introduce the theme, I would just say that, that this particular session is going to discuss two very important sides of the research. That is the literature review and theory building. Uh, I feel that uh, personally that literature review is the epicenter of any research as it not only describes how the proposed uh, research is related to the prior researches, but also lays the foundation of originality and relevance of your research problem. And that's the crux that is get, uh, being seen across uh, in all the research papers. So in a way, it justifies your proposed methodology and uh, demonstrates your preparedness to undertake the research. So it helps you to find out gaps in previous researches and place your own research within the context of the existing literature, making a strong case for why you have taken up uh, this very study which you are undertaking. 
Uh, on the other hand, theory building is an important uh, concept because it provides a framework for analysis and facilitates the efficient development of the field itself. And is very uh, and is required also for the practical uh, you know, real world problem as well. But then all these things that I'm saying is easier said than done. And all the people who are part of this can very well understand that uh, the toughest part when it comes to writing uh, any research paper is the literature review itself. You, you basically grapple with a lot of things because you have to go through uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 different research papers and then try to come out with good enough uh, review to be able to take it forward. So I would say that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but then we are left with no choice with the changing uh, world that we are in now. And research has become a, a part of inbuilt part of an embedded part of academics uh, these days. And uh, I would say that uh, this is where we are very much privileged to have uh, Professor Paul with us, who is a veteran in this very field. So on behalf of Jaipur Institute of Management, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you, uh, Professor Paul, with a green certificate which is a unique initiative of uh, Jaipur Institute of Management. So Amitabh, can we have the green certificate being displayed? <laughs> Professor Paul, this is uh, a unique initiative taken by Jaipur, where we will be planting a tree in your name in Sundarbans Forest in West Bengal. So Amitabh, I'll request you to please display that. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, with this, uh, I welcome all the participants and especially Professor Paul to take us through uh, this very session and enlighten us uh, with his experience and rich experience and the insights that you have. So uh, I pass on uh, the session now to Professor Pallavi to take it forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Merutra. Uh, dear participants, Professor Paul wishes this session to be an interactive one. However, for better audibility, you've been put on mute. In case you wish to ask any question, you may raise your hand or type in the question. Uh, you know, you may raise your hand so it will be unmuted. And uh, um, you can also type in the chat box. The question would reach Professor Paul. So now I request Professor Paul to initiate the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pallavi and uh, uh, Dr. Ankit and other uh, professors of Jaipuri Institute of Management for inviting me for this session. Um, webinar has its own constraints. At the same time, we will try our best to deliver uh, some useful and insightful information. I would prefer real workshops and real seminars and real speeches because those uh, real speeches and real sessions are more effective than webinars. Subject to our constraint, I will try to deliver my best because um, in a real seminar, you can use uh, sample specimen reading material. People can come read and prepare and discuss and interact and do some exercise. And that's more, more um, you know, powerful and effective in terms of dissemination of knowledge. However, we have, uh, we all have constraints, we all teach these days online. So um, I would try to request you to uh, get in touch with me during the session or after the session in case if some points are not very uh, clear to you because um, your level would be different. Participants in this, uh, you know, I see 114 people attending this session today and participants uh, level. Some of them would be having a lot of knowledge in this field. Some of them may be beginners. So depending upon your level, um, you know, so your understanding can be at a different uh, pace or different uh, rhythm. So um, I, I have two sets of PowerPoint slides. The first set of PowerPoint slides deal with literature review in general some thumb rules and protocols of literature review. Then I would talk about uh, how to develop uh, theoretical models or theories. Developing theory or developing theoretical models is not easy from an average academician's point of view, or it is not expected from a PhD student. So, but on the other hand, in case if you have uh, ideas and if you have um, genuine interest to develop theory or theoretical models that is likely to get accepted 
uh, in academia because academia always prefers theories and theoretical models. So that's my uh, second part of today's session. So it is actually very difficult to do both in one and a half hours because I normally conduct literature review as a half a day or two day, two hours workshop as a real workshop and theory building is another one or one and a half hour session exclusively on that. Then only it becomes effective. But today I'm trying to do both uh, in, a, in a short uh, time of 80 minutes or so. So I would, I would skip some of the uh, aspects of dimension that I think are very easy, but I would focus or I would try to discuss some dimensions that I think would be more important and critical in developing literature review papers or theory development papers. And, and, and I would be very happy to answer your question, whatever it may be subject to time constraints, either during the seminar Otherwise, after the seminar, you can get in touch with me by email or LinkedIn or whatever you prefer. I'm going to share my first set of screen. And then towards the end of my first set of uh, PowerPoint uh, file, you can feel free to ask me the questions or in between also you can uh, you know, send the question to the organizers by way of chatting and they can ask me a question. Feel free to do that. So, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. First part is out of writing review articles or literature review articles. And theory also can be developed or theoretical development is also possible based on literature review articles. So that's a specific set of literature review articles that actually lead to theory development or theoretical framework development or theory, theory, theoretical model development that will, I will talk towards the uh, end of uh, my first half. Yeah, I have had opportunities to serve as editor of a special issue for literature review papers for Journal of Business Research and International Business Review. We received uh, 75 submissions for International Business Review and 130 submissions for Journal of Business Research special issue for literature review papers. This was last year and the beginning of this year, these two special issues I handled and general law business research uh, papers are still uh, in the re-review stage and final stage and still going on. And uh, I also edited Asia Pacific Business Review special issue for review articles. Currently I'm editing a special issue for review articles for International Journal of Consumer Studies in addition to my role as uh, editor in chief of IJCS. And I have also published uh, more than a dozen literature review articles during last uh, seven or eight years. And, and the very basic and fundamental question that I would like to present to you today is why review articles? Because traditionally everyone does uh, empirical research, some kind of econometric analysis or some kind of uh, data analysis using structural equation modeling or SPSS or AMOS and so on. The basic uh, and the most important point that you have to keep in mind is a subject advances when studies are designed in a way that adds value based on the findings of prior studies. Literature review or a theory development piece or theory development article help you to advance a subject or advance a field of research. You need to contribute towards advancement of a field of research. That is what is the contribution from literature review is expected. And this can be done analyzing the findings of prior studies. What prior studies have been found and what is the research gap? What kind of research can be done in future with reference to theories, methods, and constructs, and so on? In fact, 
classic literature review articles get a lot of citations, hundreds of citations, thousands of citations. For example, International Journal of Management Review, IJMR, has a very high impact factor just because it is a journal dedicated only for literature review. There is no other secret of success behind the high impact factor of International Journal of Management Reviews. This is a journal from British Academy of Management that publishes only literature review, IJMR. Journal of Economic Literature in Economics, they publish mainly literature reviews. And uh, I have to go quickly because I have, I, I, you know, so the organizers asked me to combine literature review and theory today, both in one and a half hours time. The purpose of review article is to provide new ideas and directions in order to help future researchers to undertake novel research instead of doing recycle type of research. This is very important. Many people do recycle type of research, a repeat, redundant, the same thing, old wine in new bottle. This is what this research is all about. That is not what this research is supposed to be. Research should be towards new ideas and new directions. It is like companies, you know, companies in real life, they have to launch new products. The same way researchers, their task is to develop new ideas and new models and new theories and contribute towards the practice of such things. The purpose of a review article is to provide new ideas. Review article should provide, should lead to provide new ideas. If a review article doesn't provide new ideas, it is going to be useless. Topic selection, yeah, so here, I would suggest if you want to develop a literature review article, select a topic where there is no recent review article published in recent years. If there is another literature review article published on the same topic, please do not select that topic. Look at this on Google Scholar before you decide what topic to be reviewed. Before you decide uh, to write a review article, make sure that there are no recent reviews on the same topic. It's very important. Otherwise, uh, many times journals will reject your paper just because there is another review article, a very recent review article on the same topic. I tell you an example. In International Journal of Consumer Studies, we received three review articles on social media influencer marketing in the same month. Last month, we received three literature review article on influencer marketing, social media influencer marketing. A journal cannot publish three, three review articles on the same topic, not only a journal. I, if, I, if there is a, a review article on the same topic, journals are not supposed to publish the same thing again and again. Even if it is published in another journal, journal editors and reviewers are supposed to look at whether there is same thing available recently uh, in, in, in any other journal because these days everything is online so you can easily figure it out. And editors and reviewers do not want to consider reviews on the same topic when there are there is another comprehensive review is available. Yeah, some example. There are several review articles on social entrepreneurship. There are six reviews, six recent reviews. So there is no scope. Service recovery, there are reviews. International franchising, there is a classic review. Such topic should be avoided. Method or methodology of developing a classic literature review article. When you develop a literature review article, you have to keep in mind journal selection criteria. This is very important and critical. If you do not have any journal selection criteria, your article is likely to be rejected either by the editor or by reviewers. Sometimes paper goes to uh, reviewers, those who are not very competent because many competent reviewers decline the invitation to review because they are selfish. In case if that happens, you are lucky. Otherwise, if it goes to competent reviewers and competent editors, those who have time, sometimes editors don't have enough time because editor job, even though editors have a lot of power and discretion, it takes a lot of time. So editors are always busy. So editors sometimes don't have enough time to read everything. So they rely upon reviewers many times. So general selection criteria is very important. For example, 
Web of Science or SSCI, many people carry out literature review only on the basis of articles published in journals which are listed on Web of Science, or it is the same thing, it is also called as SSCI. So SSCI listed journals. So in that case, you do not take uh, any article from any journal which is not on Web of Science. That's a really good criteria. Web of Science is a really good criteria to carry out a literature review because you don't have to uh, go up, you know, you don't have to lower level your standard. If a journal does not have impact factor, you don't source article from those journals. Because uh, if a journal does not have impact factor, that means that journal is not of uh, minimum required quality. And sometimes some reviewers, sorry, some researchers have carried out, like I have written a review article uh, with my former PhD student. Uh, in that we use the general selection criteria. We selected articles from journals, which has minimum impact factor one. That means we ignored all the journals, which does not have impact factor one. When we source the articles, that was our inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, or in other words, I can say general selection criteria. I have also come across some researchers using criteria UK ABS two and above. And there are also some classic review article published just based on articles from journals which are ranked as UK ABS three and above. That means only premier journals because to get a UK ABS three level ranking, journal has to be a premier journal. So in that case, if you do that UK ABS three and above, you might face a problem if you submit in case if, if you don't get an acceptance of your paper in a UK ABS three and above journal. And if you submit to UK ABS two or one level journal, they might say that your article is only based on UK ABS three and above. So you should submit or you should publish only in three and above journal. That can be a handicap. That can be a challenge in case if your article does not have required quality to be published in UK ABS three and above. So, but in case if you get a minimum number of articles from UK ABS three and above level journals, it is okay to do that way. So, uh, but if you don't get minimum number of review, minimum number of articles uh, to be referred or to be included in your reference list from UK ABS three and above, you can lower level, you can lower down or you can come down to some criteria like ABS two and above. So you need to have some criteria. And a research paper I received from Sydney, Australia as an editor was based on ABDCA and A star. So they, they did not include articles from journals which are ranked as B or C in ABDC. They only included A and A star in ABDC. That was also criteria. And we also come across some review articles, those who take all articles from journals which are on Scopus. Scopus journals means much more, more journals. For example, if Web of Science journal, if Web of Science or SSEI journals in business, for example, if you say uh, web journals in business and economics listed on Web of Science, maybe 500, but Scopus means Web of Science plus lot of local journals which means Scopus in business, Scopus has more than 2000 journals in Scopus in business, which include journals of all IIMs in India, which includes journals like Global Business Review, which include journals like Vision, journals like, uh, uh, you know, a uh, lot of, at least 20 Indian journals are on Scopus, but none of them are on SSCI. Because none of those 20 Scopus journals from India, they do not have an impact factor. Okay, so that, that, that's why I said Scopus is like an ocean. Web of Science is like a lake. So a lake get extended like an ocean, so that is Scopus. So selecting articles from all Scopus journal is a challenge, and I would discourage you to do that. If you want to develop a theory or if you want to develop a literature review, just focus on Web of Science journals. Don't take anything beyond Web of Science. This is my advice, so this is my suggestion because you, you will have tough time and you will end up spending a lot of time to search all articles from Scopus. Just stick to Web of Science, that's enough. Article selection, article search criteria. 
Yeah, so in addition to the general selection criteria, you need to also have article selection criteria. Some people make mistakes here because you need to have keywords, you have to use keywords and you need to have some criteria. Some people use the criteria like uh, once you decide keywords, you have five keywords or six keywords or seven keywords. Using those keywords, you download articles. Once you download articles, you will ideally look at the article or article title or abstract. And you will try to match the keywords in those article or abstracts. This is a common process. And this is, uh, sometimes you can even decide inclusion exclusion criteria based on these keywords. So many times, many people do that. That, that, that they will select articles in case if the keywords are in the either in the title or in the abstract or in the keywords of the article. So, or in second category, even if any of your keywords are in the article text or abstract, you can still choose them. But if you use the second criteria, you will get hundreds of articles. So you have to narrow down to hardcore articles that has focus on your topic. So you might have to use subjective as well as objective criteria to decide your exclusion criteria. Once you follow number one and number two, general selection criteria and article selection criteria. And if I share my experience, out of 72 submissions I received as editor of special issue for review articles for International Business Review, 20 did not have general selection criteria. 20 plus did not have general selection criteria because a lot of articles are developed by PhD students and PhD supervisors just add their name. They don't have enough time to read and correct and fix everything. So many submissions come that way. So this is a challenge. And PhD students, sometimes they don't have enough experience and exposure to develop review articles. So professors have to really involve with them like a dedicated professor, dedicated supervisor with determination. In case if an article has to come out to a global standard level article, otherwise article will be only of state standard or district standard or maximum national level standard. So that is not what is expected in a global standard journal. And next point is, when you develop a literature review or a theory article, don't include books and local journal citations. Many people cite from Spanish people cite from local language, Spanish journals, Latin American people cite from local language, Latin American journals, Indian people cite from local Indian journals like Vigalpa or Metamorphosis or Vision or those kind of journals. Don't cite from those kind of journals in case if your plan is to publish in international, truly international, global uh, or journals of global standards. So this is my suggestion because those editors and those reviewers do not know what is a paradigm, which is a Indian journal. So what is a vision? They do not know those kind of journals. So they would, they would discount or they would think that your references are from substandard journals and they would not consider your paper. So you have to, your citations should be from uh, Web of Science journals. That is very important because editors and reviewers are aware of Web of Science Journal, but they are not aware of local journals. Yeah, some classic examples of literature review articles. Maastricht Marketing, a review and research agenda. International Franchising, a review and research agenda. So here in this three title, what you see, and this is my suggestion, based on experience as an author of uh, 12 or 13 review articles, plus as an editor of several, several hundreds of review articles I have handled till date, I would suggest to you to use a short title highlighting the word review and your title also should reflect research agenda because the reason why you write a literature review article is to set research agenda for future. So research agenda should be at least 20 or 25 percentage of your review article. If you do not set review article, research agenda in your review article, 
that review article is not going to serve the purpose because the purpose of review article is to provide new ideas and new directions for research. So it should lead to future research agenda. Otherwise, it would not make sense. You don't need a limitation section in a review article, but your goal is future research agenda. That is why in this title, you see research agenda. Otherwise, you can write directions for future research. Direction for future research and research agenda is the same thing. Sample size and time period. I would recommend you to have at least 40 articles to be reviewed. If you do not have 40 hardcore articles in a specific field, don't select that specific field or that specific topic for your literature review. So minimum 40, and it can go up to 500 depending upon the topic. Like I have, I have published literature review with 40 or 42 articles. I have also published literature review with 500 articles. So if you select a relatively new topic, you may not have enough articles. For example, I developed a literature review with uh, Ajay Kumar and uh, Anand Dunitan from IIM Koyukod. Uh, in that, we have only 42 articles on mass teach marketing. That is, the mass teach marketing is a relatively new concept. So there are not many papers in that area. So we got only 42 papers. So we did that and we published in general of business research. And, uh, but we have also published, or I have also published a review with 500 articles in a literature review. So, but if you don't have 40, then it, it is likely to be rejected, not out. And next point is time period of publication to be included. Your literature review should be based on at least minimum 10 years time period. If your review article doesn't cover 10 year publications, your review article would be considered as a substandard article. So it, or it can go up to 50 years. Some journals like in case if you cover the last 30 years of research in a specific field, last 40 years of research in a specific field. So my advice is if you select last 25 years or last 40 years of research in a specific field, select only premier journals. If you increase the number of years of your review period, then you can source article only from premier journal. But if you select only last 10 years, you can have all web of science journals. But in case if you have 50 years, perhaps you can have a strict journal selection criteria like UK, BS3 and above and so on. Otherwise, in case if it is just 10 years or just 20 years, you can have all web of science journals. Focus on findings of prior studies. This is important. Yeah, in your article, whether it is theory development or literature review, uh, you have to focus on findings of prior studies to some extent. You can develop a table if possible, using the findings, commonality, you know, common findings, and, and critically look at it. Ideally, a table need to be created to highlight studies with similar or same findings. You can call it as pooling the findings or pooling the studies. Research gaps and directions for future research. Yeah, so here you can think about providing directions for future research using a framework like TMCC, ADO, or TCCM frameworks. TMCC stands for theory, method, constructs, and characteristics. ADO stands for antecedents, decisions, and outcome. TCCM stands for theory, construct, uh, context, and methodology. So you can use one of these framework, or you can develop another framework to provide directions for future research. As I said, at least 20% of weightage in your paper should be for directions for future research what theories can be used, what methods can be used, what constructs can be used, and what industry conduct studies can be conducted. Such kind of idea should be given in a review paper. Otherwise, your review paper would not be considered as a classic review article. Yeah, now I classify review articles into different types of review articles. And the last category of review article is a review article aiming for theory development. 
and that will be focus of my second half of today's lecture and uh, before i go on to that i will give you some time to ask questions based on my this particular specific uh, powerpoint and this particular set of powerpoint is also available on my youtube channel youtube.com slash dr justin paul in case if you want to watch uh, again yeah now uh, let me explain different types of review article review articles can be classified as structured review articles and i would also recommend you to read the article on the art of writing literature review which i published uh, in international business review so which i have shared with dr pallavi in case uh, she can share also she can share it with the participants as well so first type of literature review can be called a structured literature review everything is structured in the form of tables in this case several tables a classic example of structured review is international franchising a literature review and research agenda published in journal of business research so this review article has 10 tables one table on widely used methods another table on widely used constructs another table on widely used theories in this research area and we found that agency theory agency theory is the widely used theory in this area of research likewise we found regression is the widely used method in this area of research so construct you know the, what different constructs and variables are used in this research such kind of analysis is required in order to develop a classic review article like this and it and then all the information is structured scientifically that's why you can call it as a structured review and category 2 or type 2 framework based review you develop a framework or you use an existing framework citing the authors of that framework and you develop the entire review using this framework one of the classic framework i used or i developed along with uh, professor gabriel benito from norway dean bi business school norway actually he he was instrumental in in training me in developing this framework and he is much more senior to me and he is very well experienced in this field he is a uh, uh, co editor in chief of global strategy journal these days global strategy journal of uh, strategic management society uh so so yeah so uh this article we developed and we use ado framework ado stands for antecedents decisions and outcome the entire article is developed using ado framework from paragraph 1 to the end of paragraph and this is a review article on outward foreign direct investment from emerging country and and this article is uh, one of the most downloaded article and it has 7000 downloads just from research gates and it has uh, 83 citations within uh, one and a half year within one and a half year 83 citations is a big thing this is because people like this kind of framework based literature review because it doesn't look very loose it looks perfect so i would recommend you to use uh, one of these frameworks or develop your own framework to carry out framework based literature review framework based literature reviews are most downloadable and they get lot of citations because people find it useful people find it insightful rather than writing a narrative type of literature review tccm framework tccm framework uh, theory uh, constructs characteristics and methodology i used I, i i developed this as a proper framework and used in our international marketing review article with alexander rosado so tccm framework after that a lot of people have used tccm framework after we used this in 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 international marketing review article there are a couple of articles in other journals also used in tccm framework but if you use this any of this framework acknowledge the authors those who have developed this framework in your paper in another review article in journal of world business i have come across 6w framework so this is also very useful framework 5w 6w w framework simply stands for what 
uh, you know, who and uh, where, why, and such things. It is, w framework is more like a bibliometric review. The next type of review article is theory-based review. Here, you are not using a thematic review. You are not using a theme. You are not developing a theme-based review. So traditional literature reviews are theme-based. But here, what you do is you develop a review article based on a theory. For example, self-determination theory, SDT is a theory. So a review article can be developed looking at role of SDT, self-determination theory in marketing science or role of self-determination theory in human resources and so on. So a very classic most downloaded review article is available with the title role of self-determination theory in marketing science, a review and research agenda in European management journal. Likewise, there are some review articles available on institutional theory in international business, theory of planned behavior in entrepreneurship, agency theory in franchising. Such theory-based reviews are also uh, worth uh, doing. SLR narrative type. Narrative reviews are also available. For example, Cube and Gassman has a narrative SLR in general of management. So narrative type means few tables. And this is more like a plain vanilla descriptive write-up, like a literature review chapter in PhD thesis. So, yeah. Bibliometric review is type five. Type five review, bibliometric review. There are free softwares like Voss Weaver to carry out bibliometric review. So, but sometimes, many times, what I find is that people, authors, when they carry out bibliometric review, so it doesn't, such papers, so it looks nice with some figures and tables, but it, it doesn't actually generate uh, much insightful information when you carry out bibliometric review. Some bibliometric papers come out to be well, but some of them do not come out to be well. So a classic review paper, bibliometric review, what I have come across is about open innovation, open innovation published in Journal of Product Innovation Management. Randhwa IT all are the authors. So that is a classic bibliometric review. But many times bibliometric reviews are getting rejected from journals because it just generates some automatic output from the software and some of those software of Voss Viewer are not really classic because some of those uh, table that is generated by software is not really useful. For example, country of the authors, university of the authors, you know, those kind of information is not very useful in my view. So this is a different type of literature review. I personally do not do bibliometric reviews because in my opinion, bibliometric reviews less useful and less uh, uh, insightful compared to other type of reviews. because it does not include analysis of widely used methods, analysis of constructs, analysis of country or industry context. This is a limitation of bibliometric review. Meta-analytical review is another type of review, meta-analysis. A classic meta-analysis article is uh, published in Journal of Academy of Marketing Science, which I would recommend. It is by Nolan Mathers, The Effectiveness of Celebrity Endorsement, a meta-analysis. <laughs> And meta softwares are also available like Stata, Metafor, and so on, can be also used to carry out this. And type seven, this is the type of article that I'm going to talk about in my second half of my session, today's session. Uh, yeah, so this can be called as review with theoretical model or review with theoretical model or review aiming for theory development. Or in other words, you can say review with testable propositions. And there are two journals. One is Academy of, Mar Academy of Management Review. The second one is Academy of Marketing Science Review, AMS Review and AMR. They publish only this type of articles. Sure, because they are positioned as theory development journals, AMS review and AMR. And they only like this type of article, they only publish this type of articles. Which means 
your literature review should lead to some type of theory development or some type of theoretical model contribution. And if you cannot develop a proper theory, at least they would expect you to develop theoretical propositions, which can be used as hypothesis by future researchers. But in the first piece of development, you are not developing hypothesis, but in later others can develop uh, hypothesis based on your proposition, but you, you develop a position in your paper and others use your proposition as their hypothesis in their studies. That's the goal of this type of papers. I have a uh, theory development uh, piece which I would like to cite here is to add a 7P framework for international marketing. So this is uh, something, uh, this, this, this came out as an attempt to develop a theory or theoretical model. So I would explain this to a bit, bit later in, in after taking up your questions uh, based on what I have presented now. Uh, but I would like to repeat again, all articles in Academy of Management Review and AMS Review falls in this category, review focusing on theory development. Type seven, you can see the title here. They normally include development of theoretical propositions which can be tested as hypothesis in future studies. I would like to highlight that fact. Yeah, so I have more slides, but I have time constraints. So I would be happy to answer some questions right now. And then I would go on to my second part, focusing on theory. There's a question from uh, uh, Sonal Lahuja. She asked that, how can I find journals which publish specifically literature review articles in finance? Yeah, uh, I do not do research in finance, uh, but I know that some uh, finance journals uh, publish literature review. I can't name those finance journals because it's not a uh, subject that I deal with. Okay, and there's another question. Uh, Dr. Sushma Vishnani has raised her hand, so I would request her to uh, ask the question. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Professor Pallavi. Uh, good evening, Professor Paul. Uh, wonderful and quite an insightful presentation. On your, uh, my question is uh, on the last type, type seven that you shared with us for the literature review. When you mentioned that it is something which uh, can uh, come up with some propos uh, prepositions or uh, you know something new hypothesis, and then the upcoming researcher can use that literature review article and test those hypotheses. Am I correct in understanding that? Yeah, I mean, you are not developing hypothesis in that paper, in that type of paper. You are only developing uh, propositions or theoretical uh, model or, or a proper theory because you, it's not easy to develop a full-fledged theory in, the, in a single paper. Normally, most of the theory development papers are uh, based on two or three papers. In one paper, the proponents of the theory, they develop a theoretical model or a framework and, and then some others contribute towards theory development in their own papers. Normally a theory is fully developed that way, but in some papers I have come across the, the first author itself or the main author itself or contributed towards theory development in, in paper one itself. But most of the theories are developed uh, uh, over the years, because in, in paper one, uh, an attempt to develop a theory is done uh, with uh, propositions or with theoretical models, but later others uh, carry out, uh, you know, the same field of research and uh, contribute towards theory development. So, I mean, that's what I was just trying to, you know, uh, take a guidance or clue from you. So if we, you know, start as a base from this kind of a literature review article, how do we take forward if we actually want to extend it further in my in our own paper? So in, in case if it is possible, given the time constraint. So given the type seven kind of literature review article, and if I want to develop it further for my article somewhere, for a new article, uh, so some kind of direction if uh, in case that's possible for you to give. That's what I'm saying. The, the entire 30, entire 30 or 40 minute I have, uh, for the second half is for going to talk about full about this theory development. Just all, wait. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next question is from Simarjeet Singh. I would request the person to uh, ask the question and unmute. First of all, unmute. 
Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are. We, you're audible, so you can ask okay. the question. Okay. Sir, can the combination of bibliometric and uh, systematic uh, reviews be uh, will be useful? I have seen many articles in Journal of Cleaner Production. Uh, in the recent year, they use the combination of uh, bibliometric and uh, systematic reviews. Yes, uh, bibliometric is also a kind of systematic review. So, but uh, you know, so if you just do bibliometric review based on, I mean, if you if your paper is only having bibliometric information from Vosweaver or bibliometric or software, so your article is not much insightful. So you can also include some of the some additional aspects in your bibliometric review. Part of you know, so like what you said is correct. The idea is correct. Uh, you can in include some extra tables uh, about uh, what methods are used, uh, what theories are used, what constructs are used. Such things are not there in the software. So, uh, uh, because Vosiver is not created with such information. So, otherwise, we can create a new software. I'm looking for some software programmer to create a software for developing classic scientific literature review. I'm not a software engineer, so I don't know how to develop software. So in case if you know, we can develop a joint software because Voice Weaver is a handicap software. They don't cover uh, real insightful information. So uh, that's why people are doing uh, some information from Voice Weaver plus they do manual work and then they combine and they develop a hybrid. Those kind of reviews can be called as hybrid reviews. Thank you, sir. Okay, the next question is from Mr. Shirovani uh, Gupta. He has been working in social media uh, as a social media influencer. Uh, since you mentioned that articles have been published recently in this field, so how should, uh, I mean, he asked that, how should I go about some uh, something new in this field now? So yeah, articles I mean, have already been published. Yeah, so it is not published. I said three review articles like uh, the IJCS, uh, received three review articles on influencer marketing on three literature review on influencer marketing same month because we launched a special issue for review articles so mm -hmm. uh, three review articles on the same topic so this is a uh, you know so there is no scope for writing a review article on the same topic you need to have a different topic but you can do an empirical paper on the same topic in a, in a different context but uh, review articles on the same topic repeatedly would not make sense okay all right, Dr. Somir Ranjan Sahu asked that how to decide for the title of the review articles. Your topic, like I, I already showed three titles, Master's Marketing, a review and research agenda, international franchising, a review and research agenda. Your topic, I mean, you know, review articles are different types. Thematic, theme-based review, theory-based review, uh, or the first category can also be called as domain-based review. Theory-based review, so I talked about self-determination theory in marketing science or institutional theory in international business. So those are theory-based review. Then there is also method-based review. Method-based review means, uh, you know, role of structural equation modeling in uh, uh, services marketing. So that is a method-based review. So, uh, or you can say, uh, you know, role of fact analysis in international human resource management. So, so those are method-based review. Then comes bibliometric review. Then comes meta-analytical review. All these are part of the broad family called literature review. Okay. Okay, the next question comes from our FPM uh, scholar, Ms. Trishna Segal. She asked that if the area is quite researched and exhaustive, uh, uh, does there like the scope of literature review paper on it? And if no reviews are published recently, is there a scope for that? Yeah, if there is the main criteria you have to follow is that you have to check whether there are any other recent reviews published on the same topic. So if there is another review published on the same topic, better don't spend your time on that because you will find it difficult to publish this in a premier journal. You might be able to publish this in a low category journal, which is not your aim or my aim, right? We, we want to publish in premier journals, at least a category journals, right? So, so that way you should be a bit careful in, in choosing I mean, area, a lot of research is done is fine, but what is more uh, to be checked is whether there is a recent review or not. Okay. So the next question comes from Dr. Kiran V. Bedi. Uh, 
The question is, except for the last three review types, as per your PPT, uh, so just wanted to confirm that doing review manually is best or with Bendly will be better or any of the software suggested by you? I mean, uh, for referencing, you can use software like Mentally or any other referencing software. So, but uh, in order to, I mean, you know, so it depends on ref for referencing. But then uh, to decide, I mean, you know, so like what type of reviews more useful. If you ask my opinion about what kind of reviews uh, will get more downloads and citations, I would say framework based review and meta analytical review. And the chances of acceptance or so probability of acceptance is also high. If you use a framework uh, uh, for your review, framework based review, or if you do a meta analytical review, because uh, reviewers and editors feel that you have some substance in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise, the third category is a theory based review. Uh, fourth category is the hybrid review that someone talked about. You can use bibliometric uh, plus some aspects of uh, structured review, like structured tables. Uh, using tables and otherwise framework plus bibliometric. You know, if you use bibliometric review plus framework, uh, it becomes a hybrid review. So, so that uh, people will feel that there is some substance, there is intellectual rigor in the paper because you have to also create a feeling in the minds of editors and reviewers that uh, you have done some work and there is intellectual, uh, intellectually stimulating structure in your review so that uh, people will accept your paper. Otherwise, uh, sometimes if you are writing a narrative review, people may not accept your paper, but you know, if you have very high profile co-author, uh, like a Nobel Prize winner as your co-author, maybe a narrative review will be accepted, but otherwise, uh, uh, you know, if you have ordinary co-authors, it is very difficult to convince editors and reviewers to publish a narrative review. Okay, there's an interesting question coming from Mr. Manish Singh, who asked that what is the right time to publish a review paper for a research scholar who has just stepped into the PhD program? Uh, I would say that uh, the chapter that you write in the name of literature review, that uh, you can uh, convert or you can develop it as a classic review paper. Uh, but normally what happens is that uh, literature review chapter, when you write, you write it as like a narrative paper because many of the supervisors, they have never published a review article. If they have never published a review article, they cannot train their students to write a review article. So uh, you end up writing a narrative review article. And if you write a narrative review article, your chances of acceptance is low. So you have to, even your PhD literature review chapter, you can follow one of these structures. It can be, your literature review chapter can be written using a framework like what I was talking about. So otherwise, uh, in that case, you can easily convert that as a framework based literature review. Okay. Uh, or, or you can um, write your literature review chapter um, with structured tables, like the first one I talked about, structured review, 10 tables. Use, uh, develop tables in your literature review chapter, so it becomes, chapter, it also becomes a article later. So I would also recommend that in case uh, it is very difficult for a PhD student to publish a literature review chapter as a single author paper. You need help from an experienced professor who also has to co-author because you have to provide ideas for future research. And that professor has to be expert in that field and he or she has to be knowledgeable in that field. Then only you can write uh, uh, ideas or you can set future research agenda. If you're not knowledgeable uh, in the field, you cannot develop future research agenda with authenticity. So you have to be a knowledgeable person in your field to write uh, direction for future research or research agenda. PhD student cannot write uh, future research agenda because PhD student is not very competent and knowledgeable to write future research agenda. Mm -hmm. So you need the help of a professor to write future research agenda and mm -hmm. PhD student can join hands with the professor to write future research agenda and can come out uh, with a good review article. Okay, he also asked that, uh, do researchers have the liberty of mixing and, uh, mi and matching review types as per researcher needs for doing review paper? I think that you mentioned that uh, two different types of uh, review style can be matched, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so Neha asked that, uh, asked you to explain the difference between theoretical and conceptual framework. And do we have to include both in our review? See, difference, between, difference between theoretical and conceptual framework. 
Yeah, so conceptual framework uh, lead to theoretical framework. I have to say that way. So our concept and theory are more or less are identical, but uh, uh, when a concept turn out to be a classic concept, it is it turn out to be known as a theory. So uh, suppose in case there are different types of concepts, and and if it is not a classic concept, it is not a, a theory. It is like music and classic music, classical music and music. There is music and there is classical music. So uh, when a concept becomes a classical concept, then it is known as theory. All right. So next question comes from Krishna Das Nanak. Uh, he asks that when we develop our own framework, how much emphasis is given on the rigor of framework development as it could be a paper in itself? I mean, framework development is not mandatory in a systematic review article, but uh, in an empirical article, a framework development or a theory model or conceptual model is considered as an uh, ideal thing to do. But in a research review, again, depending upon the review article, like type seven, you, you must develop. Suppose if your goal is to develop contributive theory development, you must develop a framework or theory or propositions and such things in type seven articles. Okay. Mr. Pravash Kosh asks that in TMCC framework, can we do only on constructs and find out some gaps in terms of IDV or uh, mediator variables? Uh, if you can, if you can gather information about all those TMCC, uh, then your article will have better uh, scientific information, and uh, people will get a feeling that you have done some serious homework and you have collected a lot of information about uh, what theories are used in this field, what constructs are used in this field, what methods are used in this field. It cannot be done overnight. It takes a lot of time to do that. So uh people will get a real feeling so i mean in case if you want to break it and you just do it on theory and methods you can do it that way also but if you if you do all four all four uh alphabet based thing then then uh it will look nice and it will look uh, more like an enriched uh, work okay uh, Mr. Arjun are R asked that uh, his paper got rejected in a rank journal Reviewer one gave risky revision. Feedback said either hypothesis has to be empirically tested or key propositions, but not both within the same paper. So he had kept yeah. both. So yeah. normally, normally in a paper, if it is a conceptual paper, you should have only propositions. If it is an empirical paper, you should have only hypothesis and hypothesis testing. In an empirical paper, don't include propositions. Okay. Otherwise, if you include proposition, you should not venture into hypothesis, either proposition or hypothesis in a paper. All right. Uh, Mr. Devansh Pandey's question is related to meta-analytic uh, meta review. So he asked that, can we include articles which are not in, uh, empirical in nature for meta-analytical review? And if no, yes, then how? Meta-analytical review is based on empirical paper. You collect uh, empirical papers testing causal relationship and meta-analytic paper is 100% uh, empirical uh, type of review. So it cannot include uh, non-empirical papers? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Binod Sina wants you to explain a bit about meta-analysis review. I mean, it is, it is as I said, it is, uh, you, have to, you have to collect the articles. Uh, it takes two hours to explain uh, meta-analysis review, you know, so, but I can briefly say that uh, um, you have to collect uh, article testing a particular relationship. So one example I showed you in my slide is uh, uh, effect, of, effect of celebrity endorsement on uh, purchase intention. So, so you, in that case, you collect articles testing the effect of celebrity endorsement on purchase intention. Only or the, those articles, testing that particular relationship, you collect those articles and then you find out commonalities and you find out, uh, uh, you know, uh, similarities or commonalities, uh, pool findings and meta-analysis lead to that kind of uh, uh, output. So it's, it's, it's a type of review, but it's a different type of review. Okay. Another question is related to the difference between propositions and hypothesis. Yeah. As I said, propositions 
are normally included in conceptual or theory development papers. And the, the reason why we develop a position is that this proposition can be used as hypothesis as it is in future studies. Future studies by anybody. And if you develop this proposition, this proposition should be developed as theoretically grounded proposition or testable proposition. Ideally, this proposition should be testable as hypothesis in future studies, either by you or somebody else. So, uh, yeah, so you have to keep in mind that. So, uh, the main reason to develop a position is to encourage others to use this proposition as their hypothesis in their studies. So that they will cite, they will cite your paper and they will cite your proposition as hypothesis and they will cite your paper, you get citations and if you get a lot of citations, you might get double prize one day, you never know. Okay, so the next question is related to the software Biblio Shiny uh, in uh, systematic literature reviews. Yeah, what's the question? So can we use softwares in uh, systematic literature review and how good uh, is it? This is a software, This you, you're talking about a software which you can use uh, for a bibliometric review. So yeah, Biblio Shiny is a software, you know, it's a bibliometric review can be conducted using different software, Was Fever, Bibliometrica, Biblio Shiny and all. So um, uh, this is uh, useful to do a bibliometric review. And the meta-analysis uh, can be you carried out using Stata software, R software, Metaphor software and so on. So these are different softwares and uh, bibliometric review and meta-analytic review are primarily software based. Okay. All right, the next question is about the difference in constructs and variables, which sometimes baffles the PhD scholars. Uh, it's more or less uh, like the same, you know, so it's like uh, some people say, I have eyeglass, you know, eyeglass. In America, this is known as eyeglass. Uh, when, when I was in India, so uh, I never used the word eyeglass. I, I used to use uh, some other words like specs or something like that. So. Uh, if you say specs uh, for these eyeglasses in America, so they don't understand what is this, you know. So it's the same. I mean, <laughs> it's more or less constructs and variables are very similar. <laughs> oh, it's the same thing in a way, you know. Okay. All right. Another question is this: that if a topic is new for the country, uh, like the research topic is related to goods and services tax compliance. There are very few studies available in top journals. So for such topics, what can be done and which type of review type of uh, the seven types uh, you mentioned can be used? Uh, means the topic is new for the uh, country. Yeah, what review is article, review article should be global in nature and scope. It should not be one country specific uh, uh -huh. topic. If it is a one country specific topic, journals are not interested. Then the journals, the journals would say you submit to Vikalpa. If it mm -hmm. is a is India specific topic, you submit to maybe Vision or uh, for School of Management journal, IMT journal and those kind of things, local journals. So if global, global journals are there to publish uh, research articles that are useful for global audience, their audience is global. So they are, they are not interested in publishing something that is useful for audience from one country. So keep in mind, this is very important. That is the reason why they talk about theory because a theory means generalizations. So I have that information in my next set of slide. Maybe I can go ahead with next set of slide and then in case uh, we have questions, we can uh, entertain after my next set of slides. Is it good enough? Uh, there are a lot many questions, but I think uh, you have limited time. So would you like to answer those questions or carry on with your second part? I mean, in if case if you want me to cover second part, then, then yeah. I have to go with the second part. It's up I, to you. I think, I think you should uh, start with the second part. We'll take the questions later if time permits. Hmm. Okay. So, so share my screen again. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, so in this uh, second part of my lecture, 
I will cover how to develop theoretical models and frameworks. Let me begin with uh, the statement on Journal of Business Research. Journal of Business Research websites and Journal of Business Research uh, rejection letters, normally desk rejection letters. They have this information. To be published in Journal of Business Research, a manuscript must significantly advance theory, provide generalizable empirical research or provide new models or methods. Yeah, so this simply means a manuscript must significantly advance theory. It's very important. Or provide generalizable research. Theory is based on generalization or generalization lead to theory. So this is because, and this is, uh, this is the same model or same uh, goal almost all premier journals follow because they're, they're, they're catered to global audience. Their interest is to cater to global audience and they want readers from different countries rather than having readers from just one country. So they need generalizable research. They need theory for that reason. Okay, so having said that, let's look at uh, what is meant by theory development. Proposing a theoretical model and developing a theoretical model. What is the difference? Are they different? I repeat, you can say I propose a theoretical model. On the other hand, you can also say I develop this as a theoretical model. Is there any difference? I would say that proposing a theoretical model is like proposing a girl to get married. Developing a theoretical model is like getting married. Or in other words, I can also put it this way. When you propose a theory or theoretical model, you are actually not testing it. You are only contributing towards the development of this particular theory or model partly. You're not doing it fully. But in the second category, when you say you're developing a theory or theoretical model, you are actually testing it and you are actually implementing it by way of showing that this, are, this, this, this is a testable theory. You show that empirically that this is possible to do it. I'll tell you an ex example, my own example. Uh, myself, along with Dr. Eric Maas from University of North Texas, now he's in Nashville, we developed a model. Uh, actually, it's a framework, you know, so, but it has power to turn out to be a theory. So we developed this as a uh, theoretical framework titled to add a 7P framework for international marketing. But we did not use data to show that how it works in a real field. We developed this as a conceptual article and we, uh, our title was to add a 7P framework for international marketing. And this is based on some new P constructs such as performance is a function of potential path, process, pattern, pace, and problems. This, 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 this is the equation, this is the formula in this framework. When we submitted to some premier journals, reviewers had reservation on the article because we used the word developing this as a theoretical model. They said, you are not empirically showing, you are not empirically testing your framework constructs. So you cannot use the word, you are developing this. You are only proposing it. So simply means if you are only proposing a theoretical framework, and if you're only proposing it as a theoretical model or theoretical framework, you cannot claim that you developed it as a theory or you developed it as a theoretical model. You are only proposing it. This is what reviewers say, some expert reviewers. So that way you can classify proposing a theoretical model and developing a theoretical model. 
the first one proposing a theoretical model means you propose it in a conceptual paper or a theory development paper based on literature review but in the second category you are developing this theoretical model or theoretical framework and apply that or show that using or by way of testing it with some data so this is the difference between proposing a theoretical model and developing a theoretical model or in other words you can also say proposing a theory or developing a theoretical uh, model like i have i have shared an article today with dr pallavi maybe she can share with you this is this is called uh, dynamic capability uh, framework dynamic capability theory these days it is known as dynamic capability theory but when it was originally proposed by david tees in strategic management journal it was proposed as a literature review conceptual article or whatever you call it as literature review or a conceptual article type 7 of my 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 presentation type 7 article in strategic management journal so i have shared that article so he does not test that he only proposed dynamic capability framework as a theoretical framework the same way i did it with dr eric 7p framework for international marketing we only proposed it as a theoretical framework but we did not test it in the original paper so yeah theory development and proposing positing without testing can only be called as proposing a new theoretical model or a new theoretical framework example academy of management review article none of those article test newly developed theoretical model or newly developed theoretical framework so they only propose ams review article both this amr and ams review they publish only conceptual papers which means you don't have to test the theoretical model theoretical framework to publish in this amr or ams review no empirical analysis is required to develop this theoretical model or theoretical framework in this journal these are two journals exclusively publishing conceptual review articles so next point is if you post it or go ahead with testing the theoretical model you proposed then it can be called that you develop that theory or theoretical model yeah for example you develop some new theoretical model and in the same paper you also show that this how this theoretical model can be tested using some empirical analysis in that case you can call it as you develop this as a theory or theoretical model in the same paper in that case it is called as theory development otherwise it is only called as theory proposal another example i tell you springboard theory lu and tang just proposed it as the as a as a uh, springboard framework in their article they only propose it in their article they did not develop it however some other researchers carried out the field of study and they tested springboard tenets originally it was just a springboard framework it used to be known as springboard framework now it is known as springboard theory others have tested it others have developed it as theory but the original proponents yedong lu and rosely tang just proposed it now i i, I talk about theoretical propositions in detail in the article aiming for theory development it is good to include some propositions based on the pool findings of prior studies or based on examples these propositions should be ideally testable as hypothesis by others in their research i already talked about this classic theories and if if you are if you are interested in developing classic theories i would recommend you to read some of these uh, theory proposal or theory development pieces first one is theory of planned behavior by atchison it's a widely used theory lot of uh, people use this thousands of studies 
uh, on, on this. Two, agency theory. Three, transaction cost theory. Institutional theory. Network theory. Self-determination theory. These are classic theories. There is technology adoption model, TAM model. Theory of recent action. Prospect theory. So the number of theories, there are several theories. So you can read the original paper in which these are developed in case if you want to develop or propose a new theory or a theoretical model. Yeah. Uh, I would also recommend uh, you to read these articles. One of these articles I have shared with Dr. Srivastava, so you can get it from here. So uh, this is 7P framework, to a 7P framework for international marketing. So these are our original P for original P construct. These are not the uh, Philip Kotler's P construct. These are, these are different P constructs. And uh, like when I developed this, I was not having much experience of theory development as an author. I had read theories, but, but it is difficult to develop a theory. If you don't have much experience when you try to do this first time or second time or third time. So you might have handicapped uh, because when you do PhD, you're not getting trained actually to develop uh, theoretical models or theoretical uh, uh, framework. Yeah, so and, and uh, another one I have come across is a global partnership model for global outsourcing, uh, another theoretical model development framework. And I have also developed another theoretical model for Maastricht marketing. That was a 2015 work, 2015 Maastricht marketing redefined and map. That was the title. So in that article, I have several propositions as well. So these are theoretical models. All the three articles that I have listed in particular slide, they are only proposing theoretical models. They are only proposing theoretical framework. They are not testing theoretical model or theoretical framework in the same paper, but others can use it to test or others have already tested these things in some, some other studies. So that is how then it, it turned out to be known as theory. And it actually takes about five to 10 years for a theoretical model or a theoretical framework to be known as a classic theory. Because academia moves very slowly, because many academicians, including PhD scholars and our own professors, our own dear and near professors, uh, they, they, they are not spending their time or they are not getting time to read uh, uh, papers published during last two or three years. They still carry on with papers published uh, 10 or 20 years ago. So uh, the knowledge is not really new. So we all need to have time for doing research based on last uh, two or three years of uh, work. That is important. Yeah, so, okay, so this is, uh, I think my slides got uh, disconnected. So, yeah, something happened. I think I clicked uh, by mistake. So, uh, I have to open this again, okay. Okay, so now I'm back. Okay. Uppsala model is another theory. Uppsala model, when it was uh, originally proposed or developed in 1977, it was known as a model, but now it is known as Uppsala theory, actually. This was in 1977. Swedish economists developed this based on the information, based on the data from three Swedish companies, internationalization process. And those proponents, Johansson, Wahle, and show that there is a generalized theoretical pattern based on the study of three Swedish companies' internationalization. They analyze the internationalization process of three Swedish companies. They try to examine whether there is any generalized theoretical pattern. And they found that all the firms gradually internationalize. All the firms gradually internationalized. That was their main finding. They were not very quick to internationalize. They were slow to internationalize gradually. And they also found that they internationalized to market with less psychic distance. And then they developed this as a generalizable model. And it was called as Uppsala model because these proponents are from Uppsala University. But this, this model of this theory is also known as uh, gradual internationalization model or internationalization process theory. 
So it's based on three Swedish companies. Yeah, this is another model which I developed with one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Rosarito Sanchez, and we named this as CPP model. And see, this, this uh, maybe after five or 10 years, this will be called a CPP theory when many people use this in their research studies. CPP model was published uh, one and a half years ago, last year, actually 2019. And CPP stands for Conservative Predictable and Pacemaker Firms and Markets. This one was developed based on the generalized insight derived using data from information technology companies from Puerto Rico. So this one was because uh, this one is not a pure conceptual paper. I believe I have shared this paper also with uh, Dr. Srivastava. So this one, this one is developed in the same, very, very similar structure of Uppsala model. I talked about Uppsala model. We followed Uppsala model structure and we developed CPP model aligned with Uppsala model structure. We use information technology companies. We looked at how they internationalized. We looked at whether they are generating revenue from global market, substantial revenue from global market or local market and so on. And we also classified the markets into three types of market. Conservative market means local market, one country. They ignore global market opportunities. They only generate revenue, substantial revenue from one country. Predictable market means regionally integrated markets or markets without legal restrictions. Pacemaker market means truly global markets. And we classified companies using this and we developed this as a generalizable model. But this has potential to be known as theory in five or 10 years of time. Maastricht model for brand management. This is uh, one of my main contribution. So originally I read an article in Harvard Business Review and in 2015, I started off, I started 20, 2014, 2013, I started thinking about how to develop a theory based on this, how to develop a model based on this. And my first article was published in 2015. Uh, at that time, 2013 and 2014, I was an ordinary researcher and I did not have much idea about how to develop a theory or theoretical model. So, uh, but I, I managed to publish first article in marketing intelligence and planning and, and uh, I had developed some propositions and, all, and those kind of things. And then 2019, I published this with the title Master's Model and Measure for Brand Management. Uh, and and uh, this article has a lot of downloads and citations these days. And uh, original article was developed based on the story of Louis Wooten or Louis Wooten in foreign market like Japan. I used to live in Japan, so this was based on Louis Wooten's story in Japan, the first 2015 article. 2019 article uh, is having some data. It is not purely conceptual model, so it is a database conceptual model. So likewise, uh, yeah, 20, 2018, I developed uh, another article uh, titled Toward a Master's Theory for Marketing. So now there is Master's Model for Marketing, Master's Theory for Marketing, so this is some, this is the master's theory or master's uh, model uh, has turned out to be a new theory now. And uh, general law business research has a special issue on master's marketing or master's theory applications uh, call for papers are on general law business research website now. And uh, submissions are in April, May and June. So in case if you're interested in this area, you have an opportunity to submit a paper to special issue of general law business research in this area. So yeah, so original paper 2015, I just proposed this and 2018, this got developed as a theory. So and tested also in 2018 and 2019. And uh, uh, Pankaj Gamawat Cage Framework, this is another theoretical framework which I would like to talk about it. Pankaj Gamawat uh, developed a Cage Framework, Cultural, Administrative, Geographic and Economic Framework. And, and this was developed as a framework and now it has a calculation, it has a quantitative analysis possible, but originally when he developed this framework, this was developed as a uh, classic conceptual article in Harvard Business Review. He was a Harvard Business School professor. Original article of Cage Framework came out in Harvard Business Review and underlying notion of this Cage Framework is distance between countries and that they, they classify four types of distance, 
and uh, cage framework. Some people refer it uh, as cage theory, but it is actually not yet uh, developed as a proper theory. But it is it is still as a it is still known as a framework. Yeah. So since we have we need to have some time for questions and answers, I, I would try to uh, wind up after one or two slides. Technology adoption model. Tam. This is another theoretical model. Tam. Uh, many people use Tam in information technology uh, research. Many people use Tam in in. Uh, uh, research dealing with uh, uh, technology in all fields. It need not be information technology, mobile technology, and so many, so many research papers with this TAM model. It has become a popular theoretical lens in several papers. These days, some people call it as theory, but it remains as a model, technology adoption model. So, uh, yeah, whether this can be term can be called as theory or not is a debatable question, but it is a theoretical lens, no doubt it is a classic theoretical lens. Springboard theory stories. Actually, the business management field still does not have enough classic theories. Many people use the same theory and apply the tenets of same theory repeatedly. So that is why any new theory that is being developed is likely to get good downloads and good citations. For example, I tell you the story of springboard framework. Springboard framework, which is known as springboard theory these days, it was developed as a framework in an editorial article. Some editors developed this as a framework. But since the subject or subject area business management does not have enough required number of theories, people started to use this and people developed it as a theory later. So, but originally it was an editorial article. It was not a refereed peer reviewed article. Yeah, ideally when you develop a theory or when you propose a theory, it should show causal, causal relationship between two or more constructs or variable. It should ideally show relationship between two or more variables, dependent variable, independent variables, and such kind of, that way people can test this relationship or at least determinants. It should show determinant relationship. If your theory or model does not show determinant relationship, people cannot test it. Yeah. And another thing which you have to keep in mind is it may not be perfect to develop a theory in just one article, but it is possible to do it in two or three articles. A theory evolves. A theoretical model can be developed or proposed in one article, but a theory evolves with steps such as theory or theoretical model proposal, proposal and theory testing and so on. Dynamic capability theory, resource-based review, resource-based view, prospect theory, contingency theory, etc., are classic theories these days available for research. Yeah, so uh, this is what I have today, subject to time constraint, and uh, my email is profjust at gmail.com. And I would like to thank you very much. And uh, you know. You can follow me on facebook.com slash drjustinpaul or youtube.com slash drjustinpaul in case you want to get updates and I do post updates and uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Can hear you. You're not audible. I was mute. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, now it's okay. So one pertinent question has come up from a scholar that while choosing a criteria for uh, a literature review, that is, you know, we have to choose articles only from Web of Science or ABDC or whatever. So how do we make sure that we do not leave out any article? Yeah, so you need to do two steps. First, I would say that you, uh, you look at uh, premier journals in, the, in your field and mm -hmm. uh, you search uh, articles on the journal website using the keywords. Okay. First, you have to do is that uh, uh, 10 premier journals in your field and select your source article from those premier journals and then look at how many articles you got it. Then you search on Web of Science and then source articles from Web of Science 
and in case if you already get a lot of articles from 10 premier journals you can do a review with those premier journals also but the problem is that in case if your review does not turn out to be a, a high quality those premier journals will reject your article and in that case uh, you will have problem to publish that review in a uh, tier 2 journal so uh, that is the reason i suggested web of science uh, so Web of Science is one source where you can search on Web of Science using your keywords and download all articles using Web of Science. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to search on different platforms if you just search on Web of Science, but make sure that you also browse on Premier Journal websites in your field to ensure that you don't exclude all the articles. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Puneet Rai asked that can you combine two different streams in a review paper, say workplace uh, spirituality and marketing, offering same uh, some propositions. So can two different fields be combined yeah. in a review paper? No, review paper, I mean, uh, if you talk about domain-based review, it has to be based on one domain. Okay. All right. And again, another question is about ranking the type of literature reviews, because you've mentioned seven different types of reviews. So uh, in terms of acceptability, how do you rank these uh, types of literature review? In terms of acceptability, I would, I would uh, expect that uh, journals will tend to accept uh, framework-based reviews, meta-analytic reviews, and uh, theory-based reviews. I mean, framework-based review is the best thing one can do in a domain-based mm -hmm. review. And uh, framework-based review, uh, theory-based review, meta-analysis, or these three are equal. Equal, they, these three have equal chances of getting acceptance. And then structured review, the first one I talked about, the structured review. So it's easy to do a structured review and it's easy to do a bibliometric review, but, but, but it is difficult to do a framework-based review. And it is difficult to do a theory-based review also. Okay, so we're coming to theory based review. So is it true that we need to look for the application of only one theory in various studies? That is one paper, one theory? Or yes, yeah. application of a specific theory in, okay. in, in, a, in a specific field. For example, I said, uh, like suppose if it is a human resource management, suppose you tell it to take a, some, uh, let's say proactive personality research. Uh, you can look at theory of plan behavior, application of theory of plan behavior in proactive personality research. In case if theory of plan behavior is widely used, so likewise, uh, you know, so you, you select a particular field. It, it can be the entire human resource management field, or it can be one specific uh, specialized topic of human resource management also. Okay, so if a research topic is new uh, and from the field of sales. Okay, so to be, uh, can it be based on uh, secondary data also? Because if the fee, uh, there are not much uh, literature uh, really, uh, available on the particular topic. Uh, that's why I say, so on a particular topic, if there are not much research available in sense, I, as I said, minimum you need to have 40 studies to carry out a literature review. If, if, if there are no 40 studies on a specific topic that you are going to do a review, Better don't do it. Better think about uh, doing something else, you know. So because uh, experts would say that a field need to have advanced enough to carry out a literature review. Field is a very new. There are no studies on a specific field. So that means there is no scope for conducting a review. Of Review means you are actually reviewing prior studies. Right. There are not enough prior studies. What are you going to review? Right, right, right. Okay. And uh, in a review paper, is it mandatory to include concept maps? Uh, it need not be, but ideally you should have some very useful tables and one or two figures. Map can be okay, but it is, it is, it is not mandatory. But uh, one or two figures always help in any research paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. For a meta-analytic paper, how much, how, uh, what is the minimum number of paper required? For meta-analysis paper, uh, I would say that at least 25 papers are, at least 25 papers are expected, but some meta-analysis papers are carried out with uh, 50, 60, 70 papers also, or some 100 okay. papers also. So it can, I would expect at least 25, but the more, uh, the better. 
Okay, and I've heard that for meta-analytic reviews, uh, you need to uh, use some kind of software. Is it true? Yes, it is a software-based review. Okay, all right, all right. So I think, uh, uh, yeah, while writing thesis, can one combine two or more theories together to develop the model? Yes, uh, you can do that also. For example, people have combined the uh, theory of planned behavior and theory of recent action. People have combined uh, uh, technology adoption model and uh, DOI theory, diffusion of innovation theory. Uh, Tom, with, Tom combined with the, uh, D, DOI theory and uh, TRA combined with theory of planned behavior. I have come across studies, people combining it. If you combine it without, uh, I mean, if you combine it scientifically, it's fine. Okay. One question asks you to share a story from your experience earlier in career, which is related to rejection or a failure. So this might motivate new researchers. Yes. Rejection is part and parcel of academics because most of the journals uh, have 5 to 10 percent acceptance rate. Uh, I can tell you International Journal of Consumer Studies, their current acceptance rate is just 6 percentage. Journal of Business Research current acceptance rate is six percentage or five and a half percentage. So, uh, especially this year, the number of submissions have gone up. In my life, I say early career, my life, uh, you know. So I have uh, received uh, lots of rejections. So almost average number of rejections uh, per paper used to be fifteen. And uh, nowadays it has come down to if I, you know, so if I uh, submit a paper, still the average number of rejection is uh, four to five, depending upon the quality of the paper. But so I have published, uh, let's say, 100 plus corpus papers and uh, uh, 80 or 85 uh, SSCI papers. And uh, in, the, in that, uh, uh, to, to get those uh, papers, 100 plus papers, I have received at least 1,500 or 1,600 rejections, at least. Mm -hmm. So 15 times rejections uh, are the uh, average uh, rejection per paper. So nowadays I'm not facing that much uh, rejections, but I used to have that, that many rejections uh, uh, in, in, in the, you know, 10 years ago or when I, when I was an uh, early career researcher, you know. So this is, this is part of life and you have to take it as a, uh, take it in good spirit and, and keep working because uh, that is the reason uh, some of the top schools are uh, rewarding remuneration with the faculty. You know, IIMs, uh, top IIMs are giving, at least five IIMs are giving uh, very attractive uh, remuneration for faculty to publish in uh, A category, ABDC journals or SR category journals these days, I think. It's something like uh, 10 lakh Indian rupees for an ABDC a category journals in at least half a dozen IIMs. This is because they, they cannot, it's not easy to publish uh, overnight. And so, it's, it's, so, it's, so they encourage that way, you know. Okay. We still have a lot, uh, many questions, but I think uh, we are exceeding our time. So uh, should I take more questions? I mean, would you be ready to take more questions? Should we? Yeah, it's it's up to you. I mean, I can I can answer a few more questions in case if you think I can, you know some questions are important. Uh, there are many. Okay, one question is uh, from FPM scholar in Jaipur, yeah, Jaipur. So uh, the topic uh, of uh, thesis is related to consumer behavior in green marketing in restaurant industry in rest, uh, Rajasthan, and theory of planned behavior is used. So uh, the question is, uh, should I do research on specific segment of green marketing or I can take all the criteria of green marketing in restaurants like organic food or water resources or overall study? Uh, this is a difficult question to answer just by listening to the question because unless and until um, you know, I go through the paper or at least abstract, uh, it would not make sense to answer specifically just by listening uh, one sentence question. Hmm. Okay, so uh, all right. Uh, so I think we should uh, come to the end. I should conclude this session. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, that was really an insightful session for all of us.
and we i think uh, and i really believe i'm sure that we all have lots of uh, takeaways uh, from this session and i would like to say that we as an institute jaipuria institute of management we also have a uh, very attractive incentive schemes and uh, sometimes maybe better than many of the ims so we are also getting a good incentive for publishing in uh, uh, reputed journals a a star in the the categories so that is really quite motivating for us as faculty here and as the session comes to an end on behalf of jaipuria institute of management i extend my gratitude to professor paul for taking out his time for us from his extremely hectic schedule i heartily acknowledge the same and our director dr kavita patak who could not be present uh, here with us because of some pre commitments she has also extended her thanks to you professor paul and we look forward to your next session sometime in december as we have discussed and we also extend you an invitation to visit our institute in your next visit to india when things get normal better and the success of this webinar depends a lot on the enthusiastic participation from academicians and researchers so dear participants we are thankful for your interest shown in the event and for joining us today your questions were very interesting and they kept the uh, you know session into you know they gave a momentum to the session and heartfelt thanks and gratitude to our director dr kavita patak and dean research dr ankit nehrotra for their unflinching support in organizing this session and it is motivating to see the presence of uh, mr prasoon tripathi vp hr at jaipuria group i uh, thank him for his motivating presence thank you dear colleagues and fpm scholars from our campus and sister campuses for your gracious presence in the session last but not the least the it and back end support extended by mr amitabh ghosh manager it and ms helen kaur research officer is much appreciated thank you all once again for those interested in finance and qualitative studies we have an upcoming webinar on monday the 28th of uh, september if you are interested you can ping me i details would be sent and with that i thank professor paul and everyone once again and i take your permission to sign off now bye bye take care and mm -hmm. stay uh, safe so we just uh, i would like to end this meeting now thank you so much for being here